The Jewish Response to Missionaries. This is a powerful, new, and complete 18-part digitally remastered CD series or 24-part cassette series with 423 new pages, plus an in-depth study guide by Rabbi Tovia Singer, a must-have for any library collection. This outstanding commentary is available now for only $99 plus shipping and handling. Order online now at www.outreachjudaism.org or call toll-free 1-800-315-JEWS. That's 1-800-315-JEWS. Hi everyone, a unique look at IDF activities. The city of Sderot and the state of Israel honors the memory of a young heroine, a look at artwork created by students at the Emunah College of Arts in Jerusalem, and the gathering of the Conference of Presidents of Major Jewish Organizations. Let's begin. Shalom and welcome to Israeli Salad. Our first feature is a unique glimpse at the Israel Defense Forces activities. Now I think it's important to remember two things before watching this report. The techniques, equipment, vehicles and everything you'll now see is connected to war, violence and aggression. Nevertheless, while we look at IDF activities, we must remember that generation after generation, our people have been praying for the day when the Jewish nation can defend itself. Secondly, we must remember the phrase from Zechariah chapter 4, not by might, nor by power, but by spirit, said the Lord. All these military capabilities and powers are worth nothing without the hand of God that has helped us overcome our enemies throughout the generations. And now, let's see some IDF maneuvers as we join a special cooperation exercise. The Israeli Defense Forces conducts exercises throughout the year, but twice a year they engage in this unique exercise in which the various and deferring army divisions cooperate in one event. The Israeli Defense Forces is the only armed forces of the Jewish and the Israeli people around the world. Uh, we must be ready for all kinds of threats. That's why we are ready always to fight in high intensity conflicts and against low intensity threats. The exercise or display began with one single tank that entered the hostile area. The function of this entry is an initial intelligence gathering procedure that precedes the attack or invasion. In order to pull out from this hostile area, the tank creates a cloud of smoke to mask its retreat. This vehicle and some of its unique capabilities were publicized for the first time in this exercise. The role of this vehicle is to create a minefield. It does so by scattering explosives throughout the area. This vehicle places mines. The job of removing the mines belongs to the IDF Engineering Corps, whose soldiers are in charge of clearing the area and making it safe for the arrival of other forces. Especially in these days when the main enemy is terrorism in heavily populated areas, the techniques of urban combat are critical, even when tanks and helicopters are taking part in the strike. And here's a terrorist being apprehended by the infantry forces. But don't worry, in this case it's just an actor. The main enemy today is the terror. And we are fighting terror daily, and we will be ready 
to fight, to protect and to guard against any enemy along the Israeli border. This tank is recreating a crisis situation wherein the tank has been hit by hostile fire. Swiftly, the infantry forces rescue the tank crew and a very large armored bulldozer, also known as the D9, simply moves aside the vehicle, clearing the way for the forces. The exercise was summed up as a success and the participants expressed their hope that they will use these maneuvers for the exercises only and that there will be no need to use this force in combat. The event ended with a surprise as the audience learned of the efficiency of camouflage when they discovered that a group of soldiers was situated right in front of them and only at the end of the event when the group stood up were they noticed under their camouflage. A special thanks to Tennis Samuel who got on an IDF Hercules aircraft, joined this exercise and returned with this footage. We'll be back in a moment with a memorial and commemoration for a terror victim in Sderot. Please send your comments, ideas and questions to the Israeli Salad email yoni at israelnn.com or leave a message on the Israeli Salad voicemail at international dialing code 972 Three nine one eight five 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 four. That's nine seven two three nine one eight five 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 four. In many cases, the Qassam missiles that hit the southern city of Sderot caused minor damages or injuries. This was seen by many as a miracle, as these missiles are definitely lethal. That's why, when seventeen-year-old Elam Bukasis was killed by a Qassam attack the city of Sderot, and the entire nation was shaken. Thirty days after the fatal attack, residents of Sderot, family members, friends and others gathered in Sderot to remember Ella and to make sure that her story is taught to Israeli youth. Today, 30 days since Allah was taken from us, here on the grounds of Mishkan Allah, thousands of youth and others are here to promise that we will never forget you and we will remember you forever. 17-year-old Elam Bukasis of blessed memory was a counselor in the Bnei Akiva youth movement. Ela was killed by a Qassam missile attack when she was on her way home from an activity in the Bnei Akiva Sderot branch to which she belonged. Ela's dream was to found a youth club. Ela, who saved her brother by sheltering him when the missile attack began, became a national symbol of self-sacrifice and devotion. As an act of respect to Ela's sacrifice, the Israeli government decided to support the founding of Mishkan Ela. Mishkan Ela will include a synagogue, a teaching room, and the local Bnei Akiva branch. It's not only in memory of Ella, also to educate the students, the youth, about her act of bravery. We will teach them, educate them, and tell the story of bravery, self-sacrifice, and total devotion, together with other stories of self-sacrifice that we have in our history. She is one of those who will be with us forever throughout Jewish history. At the end of the ceremony, Prime Minister Sharon called Elan's father, Yonatan, to show support and solidarity. Prime Minister, I know that since Allah was taken from us, there is quiet in Zderot. We hope that Allah will be our last sacrifice. Last week we met a right-wing observant artist, 
This week we'll meet four young observant girls who are learning art at the Emunah Girls College of Arts in Jerusalem. In the Emunah College, the girls learn art in accordance to Jewish halakha and tradition. The works that we saw in the college were part of a project to design an advertisement poster for the Rosh Yehudi organization, which brings non-observant Jews closer to Jewish heritage and writings. Let's take a look. It's part of a light bulb that forms a face. Our face gives forth light, not the bulb. To give forth light from within as opposed to being lit by other sources. We light up the world. I wanted to show that in Rosh Yehudi, we light up our soul inside. We light up each other, we light up our nation, and become something greater. Here I wrote Judaism through a different approach, as opposed to looking at Judaism as something gray or old. To show that Judaism is not like some think. I made a Star of David from colorful beads. Mostly the Star of David is very straight and not interesting. Judaism can be colorful. Many people think that Judaism is something boring and old, and I want to say that in Judaism, there's a lot of life and flowing. It's not something dry. I drew the symbol of an atom, while in the middle, I emphasize the Star of David. It's Jewish energy. There's a lot of energy in Judaism. <laughs> I think that in the midst of our daily routine, we have to relate to the really important issues, things we need to resolve with ourselves. Here I took a simple daily schedule page and I wrote all the regular appointments. Almost every schedule book is full with many little meetings throughout the day. And to this I added this big note that says, have you made an appointment with yourself? This is important and we must think of this more. It's the meeting with yourself when you clarify things that aren't connected to all the pointless external influences. The last piece, by the way, was the one that was chosen by Rosh Yehudi as the poster that will be placed in their center in Tel Aviv. Be sure to visit the Israeli Salad website. On the Israeli Salad site, scroll through all the editions, see what topics were presented on each program, and simply click on the icon to watch your favorite program. Also, watch all our fantastic music videos featured right here on Israeli Salad. So be sure to click on www.israelnationaltv.com slash salad.htm. That's www.israelnationaltv.com forward slash salad. Dot htm Between February 20th through the 22nd, the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations met in Jerusalem. This organization represents 52 American Jewish organizations from across the political and religious spectrum. Mark Kaplan was at the convention. Hi Mark. Hi Yoni. So what was the goal of this convention? Well, as they do every year, the conference gathered in Israel in order to meet with political leaders here to discuss important issues that are affecting Jewish communities in the U.S., Israel, and around the world. Just to note that their coming to Israel was the last leg of their tour. On their way here, the conference met with political and Jewish leaders in Bulgaria and Romania. So let's hear what James Tisch and Malcolm Online, the chairman and executive vice chairman of the conference, had to say about their European trip, which, by the way, was coordinated with both the U.S. and the Israeli government. What we found there was, uh, number one, a very vibrant Jewish community uh, in both Bulgaria and Romania. Uh, we also saw uh, two countries that are very supportive of Israel and also very supportive of the United States. And with their new positions going into the 
uh, EU in January of 07, we're hopeful that they as new Europe will begin to have some influence on uh, the older Western Europe. They think they can play an important role in NATO and in the EU, uh, and especially in the EU in terms of balancing the foreign policy that we see increasingly uh, distant from Israel. They have Jewish communities that uh, they have been treating well and that uh, their needs uh, should be and have to be continue to be met. Yoni, another important issue that Malcolm raised was the importance of educating children about Israel when they are young. You have to inoculate the students before they get to campus and that the, we have to do much more to help educate them at high school and perhaps even younger. We started a publication for them called Israel Highway. We started websites. We've started um, uh, preparing materials that are geared to teachers in the high school level and younger. Something that James Tisch mentioned to me was that the Conference of Presidents is finding the Internet as an excellent and cost-effective way to get information out to the public. Well, the Conference of Presidents sponsors the Daily Alert, which is um, an email that goes out to tens of thousands of individuals that has the 30 or 40 larger, uh, the 30 or 40 most important articles that appeared in the newspaper that day, and it is uh, for anybody that is any in any way interested in uh, the Jewish world. It is a great one-stop place to go to get the information of the uh, of that day. And we'll have the news update website at the end of the program. Yoni. Okay, Mark. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We're almost at the end of the program, so let's now see how you could reach those who appeared on this week's program. You could visit the IDF Spokesman website at www.idf.il, and the website of Conference of Presidents Daily Alert is www.dailyalert.org. And now our weekly insight. This week we'll be discussing the Parsha, the portion of the week of Vayakhel. Shalom to Rabbi David Sampson in Jerusalem. Shalom Yoni. Shalom to all of our viewers around the world. In the Parsha of Vayakhel, we once again mention the Shabbat. Right after mentioning the Shabbat, the Parsha continues with the list of tasks and crafts needed to build the tabernacle. So what's the connection between mentioning Shabbat and the tasks of building the portable temple in the wilderness? What do we learn from this? A very good question. Uh, the rabbis see that the connection between the temple and Shabbat uh, is very important and it's crucial. And actually, the entire design of a halachic Shabbat is predicated on what was necessary in order to build the temple. And 39 different activities were enumerated that are needed to build the temple. And these are the activities that a Jew is forbidden to partake on on the Shabbat. And the idea is that is the supreme concept of human development when people are working to build a temple. And the supreme concept of human rest is when people do not partake in these 39 different activities. Rabbi Samson, building the tabernacle is definitely a fulfillment of an important precept. So why does this have to contradict Shabbat? Well, uh, first of all, uh, all of the precepts have an interrelationship. And the question is, when we have two that are mutually militative, which way do we go? And when we talk about worship in the temple, we actually permit worship in the temple, and it does override the concept of Shabbat. And that, for instance, we bring on Shabbat a special sacrifice of sheep, which is added to a regular day, and it involves desecrating, so to speak, the Sabbath, because we have to do activities in order to sacrifice these sheep. However, when we talk about the basic design of Shabbat, what is a day of rest? What designates a day of rest? We're talking about a day of rest from activity. What is activity? The idea of activity is prescribed from what is needed to build a temple. Thank you very much, Rabbi Samson. The Weekly Insight is brought to you in cooperation with Mahon Meir, the largest Zionist institute in Israel, bringing people closer to Judaism. Okay, that's all for this week, so be sure to join us again next week. Until then, from all of us here at Israel National News, Shalom.
Yeah. <laughs>